Kurt Gödel, despite revolutionizing the field of mathematics, once confided that he saw himself as a failure. This belief was so deep-rooted that, in his later years, he refused to eat and ultimately died weighing only 65 pounds. Gödel's groundbreaking contributions to mathematics, particularly his incompleteness theorem, were so profound that Albert Einstein famously remarked that he visited his office daily just for the privilege of walking home with Gödel. Gödel's incompleteness theorem, which shook the very foundations of mathematics, revealed that within any formal mathematical system, there exist truths that cannot be proven by the system itself. This revelation has had a lasting impact, reshaping how mathematicians and logicians view the limits of formal systems. Gödel's insecurities, however, persisted throughout his life, despite his monumental achievements. To understand his brilliance and his personal struggles, we must journey back to his early years. Born on April 28, 1906, in Brunn, now Brno, Czech Republic, Gödel grew up in a privileged household, benefiting from his father's success in the textile industry. From a young age, he earned the nickname Mr. Y for his relentless curiosity, excelling in his studies, except ironically, in mathematics, where he earned only a good grade. Gödel enrolled at the University of Vienna, initially focusing on physics, but his path shifted after encountering the charismatic mathematics professor Philipp Fertwangler. This encounter inspired Gödel to pursue mathematics. He soon joined the Vienna Circle, a group of intellectuals devoted to discussing philosophy and science. While many in the circle were proponents of logical positivism, the idea that only empirically verifiable truths are meaningful, Gödel's discoveries challenged this belief. At the young age of 24, Gödel presented his revolutionary incompleteness theorem at a 1930 conference. His theorem showed that within any mathematical system, some problems could not be solved by the system's rules, a revelation akin to the well-known liar paradox, a statement that declares itself false, creating a contradiction. This insight stunned the mathematical community, with John von Neumann recognizing its significance as a lasting milestone. Although Gödel's proof was a marvel of mathematical thought, it was not universally embraced. It directly contradicted the philosophy of mathematician David Hilbert, who had declared that in mathematics, there is nothing unknowable. Gödel proved otherwise. Despite his profound contributions, Gödel struggled professionally. The Great Depression and the political instability in Austria following the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire made it difficult for him to find secure employment. His position at the University of Vienna allowed him to lecture, but without a salary, receiving only minimal fees based on student enrollment. Gödel's mental health began to deteriorate, particularly after the sudden death of his mentor, Hans Hahn. Depression, paranoia, and fear of persecution plagued him. His fiancée, Adele, a former nightclub dancer, became his emotional anchor. Although his family disapproved of their relationship, Adele remained by his side, often reassuring him by tasting his food first, as Gödel became convinced others were trying to poison him. Gödel's spiral into paranoia and mental instability intensified in 1936 when his former professor, Moritz Schlick, was murdered by a student. This event, coupled with his personal fears, marked the beginning of Gödel's final, tragic decline. Johann Nelbach, a disgruntled former student, waited on the staircase of the University of Vienna for Professor Moritz Schlick. Without hesitation, he shot Schlick four times at close range. Despite Schlick not being Jewish, Nelbach became a martyr for the anti-Semitic right, as Schlick was closely associated with the Jewish intellectual community. When the Nazis took control of Austria in 1938, Nelbach was released from prison. Many of Kurt Gödel's colleagues fled to America, but Gödel, naively optimistic, believed his future remained in Austria. Though prestigious American institutions extended invitations, he was hesitant to leave, hoping for a permanent post at the University of Vienna. However, the Nazi regime viewed Gödel with suspicion due to his connections with Jewish colleagues, and as his financial situation worsened after his father's death, Gödel realized Austria could no longer be his home. Recognizing Gödel's extraordinary intellect, John von Neumann urged Abraham Flexner, director of the Institute for Advanced Study, IAS, to hire Gödel, stressing that he was absolutely irreplaceable. The IAS, known for its scholars who were free to pursue their research without teaching obligations, extended an invitation. In an urgent message, von Neumann advised Gödel to come as soon as possible. Persuading Nazi officials that Gödel's presence in America would enhance the prestige of German science, Gödel and his wife, Adele, left for New York in 1940. Although the move brought him physical safety, 
Gödel continued to struggle with feelings of inadequacy. He believed that his later work, including his proof of the generalized consistency of the continuum hypothesis, paled in comparison to his earlier achievements, especially his famous incompleteness theorem. In therapy sessions, his psychiatrist, Dr. Philip Ehrlich, noted that Gödel feared others, especially the IAS, would regard him as a failure. Despite these self-doubts, Gödel had the unwavering admiration of Albert Einstein, who shared the same floor at the IAS. Einstein cherished their daily walks, admitting he came to the office just for the privilege of accompanying Gödel home. In 1947, when Gödel prepared to become a U.S. citizen, he delved deeply into the U.S. Constitution and even claimed to have found a logical loophole that could theoretically lead to dictatorship. During his citizenship interview, Einstein and Oscar Morgenstern, who had accompanied him, intervened when Gödel began to explain this, redirecting the conversation. He successfully became a U.S. citizen in 1948 and secured a permanent professorship at the IAS, despite concerns about his mental health. Gödel's paranoia worsened over time. He distrusted doctors, believing they were incompetent when he was treated for a stomach ulcer in the 1950s. He was obsessively cautious about his health, regularly checking his temperature multiple times a day. This desire for control reflected his need for certainty, mirroring the insights from his incompleteness theorem, which revealed the inherent limitations within logical systems. His need for certainty extended to his philosophical beliefs as well. Gödel questioned the theory of evolution, arguing that life's complexity couldn't be fully explained by natural selection. He once told a colleague that the human mind was a computing machine connected with a spirit. In a letter to his mother, he mused, If the world is constructed rationally and has meaning, then we must meet again in the hereafter. Gödel even formulated a logical proof of God's existence, though it was not an empirical proof, it was a demonstration of his belief in the rational structure of the universe. However, Gödel's mental state continued to unravel. His paranoia grew as he refused prostate surgery, believing that doctors were plotting against him. He insisted that the IRS was pursuing him, the IAS wanted to revoke his pension, and that his brother Rudy had been sent to a concentration camp because Gödel had failed to return to Austria. In his final years, when his wife Adele was hospitalized, Gödel began to starve himself. Convinced that his food was being poisoned, he only agreed to go to the hospital at Adele's urging. In his last two weeks, he refused to eat and passed away on January 14, 1978, at the age of 71. Kurt Gödel, one of the most brilliant logicians in history, had uncovered profound truths about the limits of formal systems. His life and work remind us that even the most advanced systems have boundaries, and some truths will always elude us. Gödel's incompleteness theorem revealed that not everything can be proven or known within a system. How does this concept resonate with your understanding of the limits of knowledge and certainty in our world today? Share your thoughts.